Hi, my name is Adam. Welcome to the channel. Thanks for joining us today. Today, we're going to talk about the five biggest mistakes that we saw Canadian retirees make in 2021. Hopefully, you don't fall into any of these five, but as you start to plan for retirement or if you're already in retirement, make sure that these aren't getting, you know, you're not getting trapped into any of these. I don't know how you can make that decision to retire until you actually understand the numbers and the nuances and how everything comes together. That's put together by a certified financial planner. Get that done, get that in place. If you wanna kinda of get started on your own, I talked about in the last video, but Personal Finance for Dummies, this is a great book just to get you going. It, it talks about a lot of the concepts and just helps you, you know, probably avoid at least one mistake, maybe two or three mistakes. Uh, so if you wanna just get started on your own, you know, over the Christmas holidays, uh, that's a great place to start. So the first big mistake that we saw Canadians make this year was taking their old age security right after they retire, or maybe even when they're working, okay? So your, your old age security is a monthly payment too that you can start as early as 65 and can delay up to age 70. If you retire at 65 and you just start uh, your OAS right away, they're gonna look at your OAS payments based on your income from the previous year. Depending when you start it, it could be up to two years ago. Okay, so you have to be very aware of that. Because if you worked last year and you had a good income and then you start old age security, you're going to have a full clawback or maybe some clawback, but you're not going to get all of your old age security. Uh, the threshold is about $79,000. If you make over that, you're going to get a clawback. And we see this day in and day out. People starting old age security when they absolutely shouldn't. You can delay it. You get a benefit. It adds 0.6 per month that you delay it. So if you delay it for a full year, you're getting more money when you do start it. And there's hopefully not going to be a clawback. Biggest retirement mistake number two is not considering taking a commuted value on your pension plan. So if you have a defined benefit pension plan at work, when you retire, you may or may not have this option. So a commuted value is basically instead of taking an ongoing lifetime pension, monthly amount into your bank account, you can take a lump sum. If you're given that option, make sure to do the homework and do due diligence around calculating that. Does that make sense to take? Or should I take my ongoing pension? 2021 was a very good year to take commuted value. 2020 was a good year. 2021 was also a good year. 2022, we'll have to see where bond rates go. Typically, commuted value uh, amounts are based on 30-year bond rates. So as bond rates go up, that commuted value bucket will go down. Again, every situation is different. We've done a lot of commuted value assessments this year, and some we've said take it, some not. And there's sometimes more that go into it, right? So health and, and, and whatever else. So there's a lot that goes around taking commuted value, but do yourself a favor. If you have the option of taking a CV or commuted value option, make sure you do the calculation to see if it makes the most sense for you and your retirement plan. The third biggest retirement mistake, and I think this probably encompasses the most Canadians as possible. A lot of Canadians work past 65 now. The way inflation's going, the cost of housing, just cost of living. It's expensive to live, it's expensive to retire. You wanna make sure you're still using the pension income tax credit. Now, we've done a video on that, we'll link that above, but in, in simple terms, the pension income tax credit allows you to pull up to $2,000 out of either a pension or your RSP. You have to convert it to a RIF, um, but you can pull that out on a basically a tax free basis. You get a tax credit on the first $2,000 of pension income. What you wanna do is this. You wanna set up a RIF, a retirement income fund. Go to your financial institution, wherever you hold your RSP. Go to them and say, I wanna set up a RIF and I wanna move $2,000 from my RSP over to my RIF. Everything else will stay in your RSP. And then once it's there, you pull it out. That $2,000 that you just pulled out is going to work out to be tax-free to you. Again, it doesn't matter if you're working, not working, make sure you take advantage of the pension income tax credit because it's, an, it's a free way to get $2,000 out of your RSP without paying any tax. Now, you can also use the pension income tax credit for a pension plan. This more qualifies for people that retire before 65 or at 65. Typically, if you're working past 65, there's some of you that will have a pension plan paying from an old company and you're still working. That can qualify for the pension income tax credit as well. The fourth mistake that we see retirees make is not using the income splitting. Okay, so you can, once you hit 65, you can actually start income splitting. You can actually income split a little bit before that. So you can income split retirement income. So pension income, if you have a defined benefit plan that's paying a pension, or your RIF income. So past 65, you can split RIF income. 
So let's take pension income. Pension income could start much earlier. It could start at 50, 55, whatever it is. So if you have pension income coming in, that can be split. So if you have, let's say, husband and wife, and the husband has a pension plan of $100,000 a year, which we see, I know it's a big number, but we see it. He can essentially give every year 50,000 of that to his wife for tax purposes. And that lowers their overall household tax bill, puts more money back in their pocket. Really the only income or some of the only income that you can split up to age 65 is that pension. Now past 65, you can split the RIF income. So if you have an RSP, if you don't have a pension, but you have the RSP, past 65, you can start splitting, convert it to a RIF and start splitting that RIF income. Now in Quebec, I know if you live in Quebec and you're watching this, I know your rules are a bit different. Income splitting is not there. It works a little bit differently. Uh, for the rest of Canada, you have this income splitting. So just be aware of what the rules are in your province or territory. We've come across Canadians uh, a few times this year where they're not doing it, okay? They're living common law. I'm like, how long have you been together? Ah, oh, we've been together 15 years. Okay, are you, you know, doing your taxes together and doing income splitting? No, nope, we're not doing it. And when we run the calculation, they're losing out on thousands and thousands of dollars every year, and that's being compounded over many years. The fifth and final mistake we see Canadians make is they retire too early. And please don't make this. Like I just, ah, I shake my head at it. And, and it happens too often. You know, people phone and say, look, I retired last year during COVID. I just, you know, I, I, I didn't want to work anymore. And again, there, there's reasons why you might leave, you know, mental stress, whatever it is. I, I get that. Uh, we've talked to many of you where it's just, no, I just retired. Okay, well, how much income can you draw? Where's it coming from? Oh, I have no idea, but I just, I didn't want to work anymore. And as great as that sounds internally to you, it, it sounds kind of dumb to the outside, right? And if you're watching this video and that's you, I apologize, but I think you need a reality check as well of you need to know if you can retire, whether that's running your own numbers, hired a professional to do it, whatever it is, have that number in place so you know if you can retire. You want to retire once. Not many of you want to retire twice. We've met a few of you that have retired twice on purpose. You retire, maybe go back to consulting or something. You want to retire a second time. That's fine. A lot of those people, I'll be honest, they retire really early, late 40s, early 50s. They realize, ah, we don't quite have enough. They start consulting. They make it look like all of their plan together. And then they stop consulting and they barely still have enough. Just because your neighbor Joe retired at 50, doesn't mean you get to. We all live different lives. His situation is different than yours. Maybe you got inheritance, won a lottery. We don't know what happened, okay? Make sure you don't kind of follow the people around you. And I know there's lots of research that shows like we spend time with people like us. We, we are attracted to people like us. And so if a lot of your friends and, and group that you spend time with are early retirees, you're gonna wanna naturally retire early as well, okay? But Remember, your financial plan isn't their financial plan. You need to make sure you can still retire. Yes, I know retirement sounds great and you go down to Palm Springs and play uh, pickleball and all that kind of stuff. Hey, it sounds wonderful. I'm looking forward to that day. But I know my day is not there and your day may not be there either. You know, do the, do the numbers, do the homework, make sure you can retire. You wanna retire once, not twice, don't make that mistake. So thanks for joining us again in this video. Hopefully you haven't made any of these five mistakes or any other mistake uh, heading up or into retirement. Again, if you wanna have some reading over the Christmas holidays, we'll put a link below to this uh, book. I know a lot of you have bought it that follow us. Uh, it's a great book. It just gives you kind of the Coles notes of what you need to know, you know, building up your assets to retirement and then decisions as you enter into retirement. So thanks for watching this video. We'll see you in the next one.